Hello everyone, welcome to Anime No Me, and thank you for joining us for another One Piece video. After the time skip, Zoro appeared with a scar over his right eye, and the scar has become the subject of many different theories and ideas as to why Zoro may have been left without an eye, and even more possibilities that there's something special in his closed eye. However, Oda has made it really clear in an SBS the reason why Zoro no longer has his right eye, because now that he has a scar, it makes the character look a bit more interesting and menacing. So in today's video, we're going to talk about why why Zoro has this cut over his right eye, why Oda decided to leave the characters look like this, and who is responsible for making this cut on Zoro's eye. But before we dive into the video, if you're new to the channel or even if you've watched a bunch of our videos, we'd be absolutely honored if you'd leave us a like and even subscribe and maybe leave us a comment letting us know what you thought of the video. It really helps us out, especially with that YouTube algorithm, and it motivates us to make more content. And if you'd like to help out the channel in a bigger way, consider sharing this video or another one of your favorites with a friend. But without further ado, let's get into the video. So my friends, Zoro is an extremely skilled character, being one of the most powerful swordsmen in our story, second only to the most famous and world-renowned swordsmen that we have, such as Mihawk, Shanks, and other extremely famous pirates from the past. And it seems pretty clear that everyone acknowledges the person that was responsible for making the scar on Zoro's face, and that being Mihawk during his training that took place during the time skip. However, many don't know the trajectory that Zoro was on that got him to that moment. So we're first going to start by telling you everything that Zoro went through up until the moment that he received his scar and the reasons why Zoro had to ask Mihawk for help to become stronger. Throughout Zoro's history and his story that we've seen unfold in One Piece, we have gone along with him and seen him constantly train to get stronger and improve his mastery with swords, and often even seen him change swords during his journey, getting stronger and even more powerful weapons along the way. For instance, during the Wano arc, Zoro had to leave one of his swords in Wano because it was considered a national treasure, but in exchange, he managed to obtain Odin's former sword, Enma, an incredible weapon that it has immense immense cutting power, capable of cutting even the most resistant of the Yonko, Kaido of the Beast Pirates. With each new sword, Zoro has managed to obtain and level up his skills and the ability to cut through even tougher enemies, allowing him to get closer and closer to his goal. And that goal is not just a goal, but it's also his dream and part of fulfilling a promise that he made to a very special person in the past. You see, Zoro needs to become the greatest swordsman in the world, a very difficult task that would require Zoro to face off and defeat Mihawk, the current holder of the title of the greatest swordsman in the world. And this is something that is practically impossible to do. I mean, having that title is not something that just any swordsman in the world is able to do, because Dracul Mihawk, also known as Hawkeyes, has been recognized as the greatest swordsman in the world for many, many years. In fact, Mihawk is a swordsman so powerful that even the world government and navy recognize his great skill, being a figure feared in the past for having been a marine hunter. And with the creation of the Cross Guild, it seems that Mihawk is going to be returning to that former occupation. And Mihawk's level of swordsmanship in hockey hasn't gotten any worse. So this is something impossible to surpass or even approach Mihawk's abilities. Another factor to consider is that Mihawk was Shanks' old rival because both disputed and went after the title of greatest swordsman in the world. But once Shanks lost his arm to protect Luffy from the attack from the Sea King, Mihawk got the title by default. And even though he got the title by default and is the current holder up until this moment. This is still a really incredible feat because many swordsmen have faced off against him during the years and none have been able to touch him. We also have heard mention other skilled pirates with swords in the story of One Piece that have faced off against him. For example, Vista, a pirate who belonged to Whitebeard's crew and was one of the only pirates who ever managed to face Mihawk for quite a long time without being quickly taken down. But getting back to Zoro, during the beginning of his journey with Luffy, the goal of defeating Mihawk was already clear in his mind and he only needed one opportunity to find and confront him to take the title for himself. Once our fledgling crew arrived in Baratier, this great opportunity appeared for Zoro to finally defeat Mihawk since he happened to be in front of him for the first time. He saw that he could fulfill his dream in that moment, and Zoro decided to take on Mihawk and try and take the title from him. However, Zoro did not realize the great abyss of skill that existed between them. Mihawk, with only a tiny blade, managed to break both of Zoro's swords, in addition to managing to pierce his chest with the very same blade. But upon realizing that this young swordsman standing in front of him had great potential, Mihawk decided to spare his life and give him a scar on his body, which will make 
make Zoro never forget the confrontation. In a way of showing respect for Zoro's attempt, Mihawk ended up taking his main sword, called Yoru, and inflicted a huge wound on him, but not one that was so serious that Zoro would die, but where Zoro could survive, so that in the future they would be able to clash swords again. Then, after defeating Zoro, Mihawk departed, leaving Zoro lying on the ground and crying, promising his captain that he would never be defeated again, and he would become the greatest swordsman in the world. Since then, Zoro has been training to reach that same level and surpass Mihawk. But during the Sabidi Archipelago arc, all the Straw Hats were sent to different places through Kuma's power. And interesting enough, Zoro was sent to Kuregana Island, Mihawk's home. And after exploring the island together with Perona, which was convenient on this island, Zoro ended up finding Mihawk. But this time, he didn't intend to face the greatest swordsman in the world. Zoro understood the huge difference in power that existed between them, and knew that he would easily lose again if he tried to confront him. And not only that, he was shaken by not being able to help his crew defeat Admiral Kazaru, and the fact that he couldn't even defeat Kuma. So Zoro decides to ask Mihawk to train him, because if he were to be trained by anyone, it had to be by the greatest swordsman in the world. And he ends up agreeing. But before starting the training, Mihawk acknowledges that this is not going to be easy. However, Zoro already knew that, and he wanted to become stronger. So no matter the form, leaving his pride aside to get stronger through whatever rigid training that Mihawk would throw at him, Zoro did it so that one day he'd be able to overcome him and obtain his title. Thus, Zoro spent two years training with Mihawk, going through various difficulties to be able to learn how to better use his swords in combat, and also learn the main fundamentals of hockey. Zoro expanded his knowledge about armament and observation hockey to further expand his abilities as a swordsman, as well as giving him the ability to face off against Logia users just like Kazaru. And this training was indeed quite difficult. Mihawk made Zoro reach his limits several times, just so that his body could become more resistant and faster and stronger, reaching a limit beyond that of a simple human being. There were even several times that left Zoro very close to dying and depleting his energies completely. But Zoro would not give up. He had to become stronger to achieve his dreams and his promises, so he followed the given orders by Mihawk. During the beginning of his training, Zoro didn't even fight Mihawk himself. Himself. Instead, he fought up against giant mandrels that themselves had great mastery in swordplay. And through these mandrels, it was able to give Zoro the ability to take on larger amounts of enemies. As his training evolved and he was able to beat the mandrels first, Mihawk then had him take on an even larger mandrel that was even more experienced at swordplay, making Zoro go through the same training process again and again to further increase his skills and abilities. And even more curiously, the giant mandrel seemed to have a sword very similar to Mihawk's Yoru. Now, obviously, the sword that the Mandrel had didn't possess the same sharpness or durability of the original Yoru that is currently Mihawk's main blade. I mean, Yoru is one of the greatest named blades in the world of One Piece. And of course, he also didn't have the same skills as Mihawk, but it was still another warm-up until Zoro was ready to start his training with Mihawk himself. So through his battles with the various Mandrels and beasts on the island and learning how to use his hockey, this enabled Zoro to be able to be ready at a place where he could even train with Mihawk. Something very similar to Luffy's training, in which he had to face off against giant beasts until he himself was ready to face off against Rayleigh. So the animals, actually the easiest part of Zoro's training. After being able to learn to use his hockey and improve his sword skills a bit, Zoro then finally began to train directly with Mihawk. And through several combats, which Mihawk still had to hold back quite a bit so he wouldn't kill Zoro in the training. During these clashes, Mihawk managed to injure Zoro several times, causing minor injuries to his body over the two years, but nothing that actually left a scar on Zoro's body. However, at some point during that training, Mihawk did end up injuring one of Zoro's eyes, something that could be deadly for a swordsman because they need to be able to keep their eye on surroundings in order to find a way to defeat their opponents. But because Mihawk taught Zoro how to use observation hockey, the lack of vision in one eye wouldn't hurt Zoro's performance that much because it made him be more aware of his surroundings and even sharper with his hockey skills. And this may not be the only reason why Zoro Zoro got his eye cut during the time skip. Again, Oda said that Zoro's right eye was cut out to give him a more interesting appearance, demonstrating that he had to sacrifice something in order to be one step ahead of his goal of becoming the greatest swordsman in the world. And let's be honest, if it meant he would become the greatest swordsman in the world, Zoro wouldn't mind losing his eye 
his side or his arms, as long as he was able to achieve his goal. Because his goal, after all, is much more important than him seeing the pretty scenery around the world of One Piece. Through observation hockey alone, a swordsman can fight extremely well in a very proficient way, as was demonstrated by Fujitora, because he is completely blind. Fujitora can fight perfectly with his sword, and is a character that could have sword mastery close to that of Mihawk. But there you have it. The reason why Zoro no longer has one of his eyes isn't because he's hiding something, or as many in the community have speculated that that's where Ashura lives, or some hidden power lies underneath that wounded eyelid. It's really just to make him a more interesting and powerful character. But again, Zoro's journey isn't over yet, and throughout this final saga, Zoro will finally gain more scars, and even more ability, until he finally achieves his dream of becoming the greatest swordsman in the world. But with all that said, my friends, we'd now love to know what you think about it. Why do you think he lost his eye? Do you think it's as simple as Oda Sensei said during the SBS? It was just for character and color? Or do you think there's something that Oda has hidden up his sleeve that may get revealed in this final arc? And also, what do you think about that idea out in the community that that's where Ashura lives, that Zoro keeps that demon hidden underneath that eye, and that when the time is right, Zoro will unleash all of that stored power. Let us know what you think about that in the comments below. So as we wrap up our video for the day, we'd like to thank all of you so much for watching the video, especially those of you who've hung out with us here to the very end. Be sure you comment on any themes or ideas that you'd like to see in future videos. And also, since you made it this far, give us a like and hit that red subscribe button before you head out to take on the rest of your day. Hope to see you all in our next video. Let's keep sailing this giant sea together. Take care.